Hi, I'm Stephanie Lester and I am a fibre sculptor and uh, welcome to the Bloom's Dive Into Art event. I hope you're enjoying it. So if you've been watching everybody and come to me, then you would have just been and visited and seen Elisa and next you'll be popping on to see Steve. So just to um, do a bit of admin, so you have eight opportunities or nine opportunities I think nine opportunities to win a prize um, each of the artists um, have a prize mine is a 50 pound voucher and if you subscribe like and comment um, below here um, and for the rel relative prizes on the other artists um, videos on theirs then you have an opportunity to win a prize and that will be pulled out on the 18th and we'll announce the winners on the website and there'll be a link below here. And then there's the big prize. So the big prize is a 400 pound voucher, which you can use either um, against a bigger piece of art. So, you know, a part payment for a bigger piece of art of one of the Bloom's artists involved in the event or um, listed on the event page are um, items that you can buy from each of the artists for that amount of money including the postage so basically that prize will um, either buy you a lovely piece of art in itself or you may have your eye on something bigger and you can use the um, voucher towards that so brilliant very exciting myself obviously i'm not allowed to enter <laughs> so okay let's um get down to business let me just double check i haven't missed anything off um i don't think so oh i suppose yes to actually enter the um larger prize for the um 400 pound voucher in each of the videos um there's a word which will either be spoken um or it'll be written on the screen and you need to collect all the words from all of the artists in the order that you watch them in here um, and put it together into a phrase, a sentence, whatever it is, um, and put it on the entry form. And the entry form is also on the event page on our website. So welcome to my little Garden of Eden. Um, I just have a selection of pieces that I'm currently taking to shows, which I thought it would be nice to just give you an idea of the variety of pieces um, that I do. So, here's my Mr. Wolf, who is a European wolf. And if you notice, he does actually have felt eyes. Some of my pieces have glass eyes and it completely depends on the expression and the look that I'm trying to get. So that's my European wolf versus my African lion. And if you look here, he most definitely does have glass eyes. And I have used the colors which reflect um, the evening sun in the um, Kenyan landscapes because when you see the animals in the wild they never are those just yellows um, goldy colors they're always reflecting and on this particular occasion it was a beautiful beautiful mauve evening and down to a smaller piece where we have a little hare who's running 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 and he's zooming around a corner there he is Okay, I think he's just running for fun. He's not running from anybody. He doesn't look scared, does he? Okay, so here we have one of my fantastical creatures, my Pegasus. Wouldn't we all love to ride on a Pegasus? Now, Pegasus has got silk and alpaca in his wings, and he has felted eyes, and he has an alpaca mane as well. And if we go up, I might be able to just about to show you He's actually got silver hooves and that is fine silver hooves which because everywhere that the pegasus lands a spring um, erupts from the earth and it is there that spring which inspires creativity amongst poets and artists so there you go how appropriate 
and we have our Mauritius kestrel. Here we go. See if I can, you can see the Mauritius kestrel. His delicacy is a blue gecko, um, and the Mauritius kestrel was endangered, and then it wasn't, and now it is again. <laughs> so we need to look after. But obviously, you know, native to Mauritius. Um, which is where the dodo was from. So, you know, we've kind of got a bit of a reputation there, haven't we? So what a beautiful creature with his 300, well, incidentally, he's made up with 300 feathers and my pangolin has um, 400 scales. So you can imagine, took a bit of time. And now our friendly, friendly little meerkat. Who doesn't love a meerkat? Okay, can we see his claws? Cause they have very long claws. And he has needle felted eyes, nice dark eyes and whiskers. Okay. African bull elephant. Now, you probably have to see this chap in real life to actually see all the different colors that we've got in his coat because he has yellows and mauves and there's even a little bit of shiny um, fibers in there too. And don't you just love his eyes? I love elephant's eyes. So expressive, needle felted ones as well. We'll come down to a little puffin. I love puffins. I went to an island where the puffins live. They are just the most splendid of creatures. So this is how I um, start to make my armatures for my sculptures. I always download um, a picture from the internet of a skeleton of the particular animal that I'm creating. In this case, it's the tiger. And um, I then basically take my wire and twist <laughs> the wire together and make the shape. To a certain extent, it might look pretty basic, but once I've actually got these legs completed I will then shape them um, very similar to the skeleton so that I can check that I've actually got the sizing and shaping correct. I always do it in the standing position to start with um, because it just gives you that ability to check it. Most of the skeletons online are in the standing position. So I'm now taking the skeleton and just adding um, some wool and that's done by wrapping the wool around the wire and then I do a really basic felt with my needle just to keep it in place and this is the core and I'm here I'm just really making uh, a wool skeleton around the wire skeleton which I can then add to and start creating the shapes that I need to. So um, yeah, as you can see, I started off with the white core and then on this occasion, I'm actually going to use the yellow core to start building out the shape because obviously a tiger has um, a lot of yellow in his coat. And so um, it just makes sense. You can get, um, lots of different colors of the core and like for an elephant I might use gray core etc so basically I am now wrapping more around and building out the chest and this is still um, basic shapes rather than me sculpting um, a very specific muscle group I will be referring back to the picture to make sure um, I basically see the chest comes down to the right level and I've got the basic size of the bottom and the head and it's at that point then that I would add more detail. Um, obviously this is speeded up because um, you have to do an awful lot of um, stabbing with the needle and at this stage I really am trying to get it um, quite not solid hard but um, hard enough so that I can add. Now here 
I'm, I'm making shapes and then I'm adding them. It's a bit in the same way as if you're doing a clay sculpture where you take a piece of clay and add it. Um, so I very much do that, make shapes, add it. And um, as I always say to anybody when they're making a sculpture um, out of fiber, it def most definitely gets um, to looking a bit like an alien. Um, you would not know this is a tiger, for instance. So this is when I'm actually reviewing my piece and looking at the different sides and then um, reposing, putting the legs down. And here I'm starting to think what position does he need to be in in that crouch from the side, from the top. Um, and then I actually place him on the piece that he's going to end on just to um, check where I am. So I thought it's worth showing you that once I've added all that core and I've built up the muscles and I've got the shape, this is when um, we start to decide on the top coat. And in this case for the tiger, he absolutely has fur, even on his face where obviously it's very flat. I still do this process where I go over the whole of the body and face with these longer strands and um, you can see here I'm felting them in um, basically um, stabbing them in the middle down into the area in this case where I'm putting the blue line on and then I'm adding the yellow fur in between and I basically do this in about one inch worth of depth to start with and once I've got that in um, I would then use my scissors to cut it down to whatever length I want and in the case of the face um, I cut it down really really um, flat to the face so it's just got that really slight um, hair feel to it um, whereas in the body I mean certainly in the neck um, this particular Siberian tiger has quite long fur around the neck and then as it goes down the back I will adjust it accordingly and that's when I will start to look at um, videos and pictures of real life tigers. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to start wrapping this up now and um, I really hope you enjoyed your foray into my world as a fibre sculptor. And um, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment below so you can be entered into the competition and good luck with that. And I really hope that you saw my secret word which flashed up on the screen during the presentation. So you've got a couple of minutes now before you need to pop over to the next link and see Steve at Wacky Lamps. The link is in the description plus I'll also add it into the live comments here so you'll be sure not to miss it and um, yeah grab yourself a drink and find out about Steve and his Wacky Lamps and I really hope to see you soon.